Hi guys, welcome to Little Wicket Railway. I'm Rob and in this video we're slowing things down. Recently I've had a few people ask if it's possible to slow down the speed of servo point motors to make switching a point more realistic. So we're specifically going to look at that, but this could be used to slow down any servos and even to fade LEDs if you've got them connected to a servo driver board. We're going to look at two ways of doing this. First, an easy way that's quick to set up and does the job, but depending on your setup could cause delays in other areas. And you'll see what I mean later. The second way is more complex and a bit more effort to set up, but won't cause delays anywhere else on your layout. Again, all will become clear in the video. Both methods involve coding. <laughs> But don't worry, I'll guide you through it as best I can and I've tried to make everything as understandable and interesting as possible. As with most of my other videos, I'm using an Arduino and a PCA9685 servo driver board to drive the servo. If you want to know how to set up a servo as a point motor, then check out this video up here. Before we start, if you're finding these videos useful, then please subscribe to the channel and give the video a like. And if you're feeling generous, then the super thanks button is down there and lets you support the channel financially. Okay, let's get going. We'll start with a single servo set up as a point motor. This is connected to a PCA9685, which in turn is connected to an Arduino Nano. I've got a push to make button connected to pin 5, which I'll use to activate the point motor. Here's the code that I've uploaded to the Arduino, and if I press the button, the point moves from closed to thrown. I've timed it and it takes around 0.2 seconds to change position. I found a couple of clips of the full size points changing and they take around 1.5 seconds. So we need to slow our servo down by just over a second. Let's go back into our code and we're going to add in a couple of for loops. These allow us to break the servo's motion into smaller steps and we can use this to control the speed. The servo is moving between the closed position at 1900 and the thrown position at 1000, so there are 900 possible positions in between thrown and closed, and we're going to use these for loops to stop at some of those positions in between. We'll start with a step size of 5, so the servo will start at 1900, then take 5 off and stop at 1895. Then 1890, moving 5 positions each time this loop runs until it gets to 1000. Just introducing this loop will cause some delay, but probably not a lot. So let's upload our loop and see how fast the point moves. So the point is still changing position in around 0.3 seconds, which is obviously still too fast. We can reduce the step size to the smallest value, which is 1, and see what that does. OK, so that's got us up to about half a second, but we're still far too fast. We need a way of adding another second on. And we're already on the minimum step. You can't go below one here. So now we move on to our first method of slowing these things down. We're going to put a delay function in the loop. This is the function we'll be using. We enter a time in milliseconds between the brackets and each time the function is called, the Arduino is going to pause and do nothing for that length of time. Let's go back into the code, we'll change the step size back to 5 and insert the delay function into our loops. We'll start with a delay of 10 milliseconds and see what effect that has. So that's pretty close to 1.5 seconds now, you can keep adjusting the delay time and the step size until you get something you're happy with. So we've managed to get our turnout moving realistically using the delay function and this might be all you need to know for your layout but I want to share a potential problem with this solution. Let's assume that we've got a few other things attached to this Arduino and that controlling the point motor isn't its only job. We'll add a couple of servos onto PCA9685 pins one and two. These can be level crossing barriers and we'll have these come down slowly when the button is pressed. And on PCA9685 set of pins three, I've connected a green LED, which I want to go out when a train is detected by this infrared sensor that I've connected to pin six on the Arduino. So let's modify our code to include these extra bits. And rather than hard code all the values into the code below, we'll create some tables to hold them instead. And note the values for the LED being 0 and 4096 as max brightness. We'll also create tables to hold the delays and the step sizes. We need to create an input pin on number 6 for the sensor. And then we need to go through and change all our hard coded figures to reference the tables that we've just created above. For some reason my delay code's gone missing, so let's put that back in. And this time it's going to reference the delay table rather than have a hard-coded figure. 
Once the code for the point motor servo has been updated with all the table references, we can copy this code and paste it three times below for the new bits that we're adding in. Then all we need to do is go through and update all the table references so they're pulling in the right figures. And for the LED, we need to change the digital read from five to six because it's taking the input from the sensor rather than from the button. Let's upload that and see what happens. As you can see here, the infrared sensor is working and when the wagon goes past, it's detected and the green LED dims. So let's press the button and we can see the level crossing barrier start to move and it takes a few seconds for this to come down. Then the point motor activates and finally the other level crossing barrier, which again takes a few seconds to come down. Now, if I take my finger off the button, the servos will return to their original positions. But look what happens when the wagon passes the IR sensor. The sensor is detecting the wagon, but the Arduino is occupied moving the servos. And whilst it's doing that, it can't deal with the sensor input. So we totally miss the train which goes past undetected and the green LED stays lit. The key thing with train detection sensors is that they react quickly because you don't want to miss a train. So why is this happening? Well, here's some bad animation to help explain. Mr. Nano goes to the first task, which in our case is the servo point motor. He starts the task, but the delay function causes Mr. Nano to stop what he's doing and take a short nap. During this period, nothing happens. Each delay is only for milliseconds, but as you saw in the demonstration, they soon add up to seconds for each task. And the way we've got it coded at the moment means Mr. Nano has to complete one task with all these short naps in the middle before he can move on to the next task. What we really want is for Mr. Nano to multitask and that's where our second more complex solution comes in. We're going to stop using this delay function and add in our own timing system. We want Mr. Nano to go to the first task, check his clock to see how long it's been since he last did something to see whether it's time to do it again or whether he needs to wait a bit longer. He then goes to the next task, checks his clock to see if it's time to do something before moving on to the next task and so on before heading back to task one. This way we've never got any downtime and all our tasks are being completed simultaneously. So let's have a look at how to code this. First we need to create a couple of new tables, one to hold the current position of the servo and one to hold the previous time that the servo was activated. Then we'll stick in a quick for loop just to set the current position of the servo to be the minimum value to start with. Next is the key bit. This is where we create our timer and we're using the function millis. This function returns the number of milliseconds that have passed since the Arduino began running the program. So in our main code, as well as checking whether the button's been pressed, we need to check whether the current time, less the previous time when the servo was activated, is greater than the delay. And if it was, we can carry on with the code. And the first thing is to set the previous time it was activated to the current time. Then we're gonna replace the for loop with an if statement. This checks to see whether the current position is less than the max value. And if it is, we're gonna change the current position to be the current position plus the step size. Then we're gonna send that current position to the servo. We can delete any reference to the delay because we're not using that anymore. And we just need to add in an else statement that says if the current position is equal to or greater than the max value, then we know we've finished and we can set the status to one. Now we need to repeat this for the other for loop. So replace that with an if statement that checks whether the current position is greater than the minimum value. And if it is, we're gonna change the current position and take off a step value and send that to the servo. Again, delete the reference to the delay and add in the else statement. Then it's quicker to delete all the code that we used before for the other servos, copy our new code, paste it three times below and update all the table references. So let's upload it and see what happens now. So when I press the button, all three servo motors move simultaneously and you can see as the wagon's being detected by the IR sensor, the LED is going off. So everything is working simultaneously and there's no delay detecting the wagon. But we can make this even better. Our code has about 150 lines. That's because we've had to copy and paste our main bit of code four times. And each servo you add to this is gonna take up about another 30 lines. The only difference each time we pasted it are the table references. I'm not great at coding, but whenever you see code repeated like this, it's almost always better to convert it into a function. So let's do that, and here's the new code. We've still got our tables up here at the top, but I've created this function called move servos. 
all it needs to know is what the trigger pin is, so pin 5 for the button or pin 6 for the IR sensor, and what the connection on the PCA9685 is. From there it can get everything else from the tables we created. Then the setup section is the same, but our main loop down here is now really neat and tidy. We just need to call our new function for each of the servos, giving it the input pin number and the PCA9685 output connection. So overall our code is now about half the size. <laughs> So there we go, two methods for slowing down servos for realistic movement. One using the delay function and one using the millis function. If you want more information on using these functions, then I've put a link to a really good Adafruit tutorial in the description, along with some affiliate links, should you want to purchase any of the kit. If you found this video useful, then please give it a like and subscribe to the channel. I would really appreciate it. And congratulations if you've made it this far. We've covered quite a bit of coding and it can be a bit dull. So. As a reward and a reminder that this channel is actually about trains, not just coding, I'll leave you with a clip from the Seven Valley Railway steam up that I'm probably not going to use anywhere else. Thanks for watching and I will hopefully see you again soon.